G'day everybody, Spuddy from Spuds Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing a pickup. We're going to be picking up some freebies, some Mega Drive stuff, some DS stuff, and also some PVMs. Let's go. So today's video, uh, we're going to be doing some pickups. So this is all within my local government area. For those who don't know, Sydney is still in the middle of a lockdown, so can't travel too far or wide to pick up stuff at the moment. But uh, I am finding there's a lot of freebies out there. So two of these are actually freebie bundles. One's a Mega Drive bundle. It's not huge. It's three games, uh, but they're all complete. And I found this out on Gumtree, so I just went. And, um, I picked it up. We're going to pick it up now. And then I'll circle back, there's a little DS bundle, I think with five or six games. Um, it was only advertised free with the games, but then I just sent an inquiry, what about the console? And they have the console as well, but it is has a broken hinge. Uh, which isn't too much of an issue, because I think you can buy replacement shells on places like eBay now for 15 or 16 bucks. So, um, that could be good if it works. So yeah, I think there's five or six games there. And then I'm going to pick up a pretty big bundle, or a pretty expensive bundle, it's, it's two PVMs. Both 14 inches, both Sony PVMs, both have RGB. And one actually has uh, not only analog RGB, it also has digital RGB. So, kind of excited about picking up those two PVMs as well. So what I'll do is I'll um, concentrate on the road now, and I will uh, start the video up when, I, um, when I'm picking these things up. So stay tuned. So I've just picked up the uh, Mega Drive games. Um, the gentleman was kind enough to actually found some other stuff to throw in. So I'll just um, turn the camera around here and I'll just show you what I've managed to grab. So that's it there. He's the threw in this V3 fighting stick for me for the PlayStation 3, the horror fighting stick. Did say it had a broken R2 button, uh, but that's alright, we'll have a look at that and see if we can get it working again. I mean, worst case, the kids can use it and pretend to play games and whatnot. Uh, we've got the Sega games which he said he had, they're all complete, so Shadow of the Beast. Yeah, and we've got Double Dragon 3, the arcade game. He actually found this for me as well, which is pretty cool. This is um, Sonic N for the Engage. Still sealed, brand new. Uh, gave that to me, and I think that was it. There was another game in here. Oh, there it is. It's three Sega games, I think. So, Championship Bowling. No idea what that's about, no idea what it's like, never heard of it. Uh, but I'll give it a run nonetheless. You know, so I can't really complain. Look, it was free. Um, they get three complete Sega Mega Drive games, a sealed and gauge game. Maybe I should send that off to WADA. Just joking. Uh, and the fight stick, that's pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, off to pick up the PBMs now. So um, stay tuned and I'll, um, I'll come back to you with the PBMs. So here we are. Uh, about to pick up the PBM, so I'll just head off inside now. I'll speak to the gentleman and um, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the PBM. So I thought before I go on and pick the DS stuff up, I'll just give you guys a look at what the two PBMs look like. So I'll just um, open the boot up. So that's them there. So we have, just turn it around here. So this is the, the 1444QM, this is the one that has the analog and digital um, RGB, oh hang on, no this one, sorry, this one doesn't have the digital RGB, it just has the analog RGB, uh, it does component composite in this video, as long as that funky ass uh, VTR connection, as you find in a lot of Sony stuff, and the other one here, I'll just shuffle these around. This one, I'll just move the um, this one out the road here and see. And this is the other one here. Uh, once again, in really nice condition. Uh, it is missing the Sony badge, but that's all right, you can buy replacement Sony badges. Turn it around the back. So this is the one with the, the digital RGB. I'll just fix it there. So very still, pretty much exactly the same connections as the last one. Um, but we've got that added digital RGB. The model number is a 1442QM. Uh, 
and that's the that's the name of the company that owned them. So looking forward to getting these home and uh, and giving them a test. There we go. Last pickup. What a day. Uh, so what do we get? Uh, so we got Moshi Monsters. Not a bad game. Moshi Zoo. Never played it before. Not bad for freebie. Wario Wear Touched. Which I think is just a series of um, um, sort of mini games or, micro or small games. Uh, that are available on, on NES and whatnot, and um, just done for the for the DS. Staple for everyone, new Super Mario Brothers uh, for the for the DS. Another staple, Brain Training. It's been coming handy actually because I don't have this, but when we're looking at modding consoles, I think uh, this may come in handy. Or is that for the Wii U? Can't remember now. Anyway, uh, and another game called Jewel Match. Never heard of it. I'll give it a crack later on, or at least I'll have a play with it. Uh, what else is in the bag she gave me? This is the DS. Oh, yeah, it's broken. So the hinge is broken on it. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. But I'll give that a power up. She said, she said it still works, so. Um, The ribbon cable, I don't want to pull too hard because I've got the ribbon cable on the other side. Anyway, I'll give that a try, see if I can get it to work, and um, if it works, I might just look at swapping the case over because, as I said, I think I can get cases off eBay. Uh, I'll replace the cases about 10 to 3 bucks or something like that. Uh, good, comes with the charger as well. Okay, so obviously, the lady was English or had come from, picked up it's an English plug. The good thing about this is you only need an adapter because I'm pretty sure they're dual voltage. Well, this one's 230 volt anyway. It doesn't matter. It's just Australia. You just need a, an adapter for the plug. And two DS pieces. Yeah. And a thousand of those. But anyway, actually three. Three of those. So, anyway, once again, it's not bad for a freebie. Um, you know, in the worst case, I'll fix the DS up. Gives us a few more games to play, etc. It's good that I've got WarioWare touched and um, and also Super Mario Brothers. They're two nice games to have, especially with three. Anyway, let's get home. We'll, uh, we'll get it all out on a bench and uh, we'll continue the video. So here we are back. Uh, we've got everything in front of me that I went and picked up. Now I've also added in a couple of things as well. Um, I picked up. I did a bundle pick up the other day where I didn't. I didn't really video the the actual pick up itself. Um, but there's some really nice games that I managed to pick up as well. So I'm going to do that as part of this pickup video. Um, it's just some PS2 RPGs, which are NTSC uh, USA exclusive. And also some PS1 RPGs that are also NTSC uh, U exclusive as well. So not only uh, are they pretty rare, but they're also hard to find in Australia. So to get them in a big bundle at once is um, always an advantage. So kicking the video off first up, just to quickly talk about the DS package I picked up. So it was the white DS. Um, you can see there it does have a broken hinge, but it does actually turn on and play okay. So I'll end up um, just replacing the shell on this and my young fella can use this for his little handheld portable um, when he wants to play, you know, when he's just sitting on the lounge. He does have a Switch, but I've got a lot of DS games um, in my collection, so uh, it, it, they might as well get put to good use, so he can use that uh, once I fix that up. Now the games, all these games were complete. Um, Brain Training, as I said before, Super Mario Brothers, Moshi Monsters, Wario Wear, um, and Jewel Match. So that was a, a pretty good pickup as well. Um, it was free, so I can't complain. The DS did come with a charger, but I've left that in the car. So, uh, and it came with these little handy uh, DS cartridge holders as well. So I'll um, I'll keep them because the young fella tends to swap cartridges around and leave them laying around. So. I'm trying to teach him the right thing, but at least if I'm getting to put him back in the cartridges, it might help. Um, also, I picked up, now, well, sorry, this was picked up with the Sega Mega Drive games. So, that's a Sonic N, uh, which is for Sonic, which is for the Nokia N-Gage. So, uh, I don't know if anyone knows what the Nokia N-Gage was. It was essentially Nokia's attempt at coming into the mobile gaming market. It was a little, it was a, it was a phone. 
um, as well as a gaming console, chemical handheld. Now, it didn't do either things very well, in quite honest, or quite, to be quite honest. Uh, they are quite hard to find. I do have one here laying somewhere, but I tried to find it to show you guys. I just don't know where I've put it. Maybe it's up where the other collection is. Uh, but I can't even remember if I have this game on there. I know I had about half a dozen, or about eight, I think it was, engaged games, and I can't remember if I had Sonic N. So I'll keep this one in the collection, um, just in case I don't have it. And the fact it's fully sealed is, is pretty cool as well. I don't know if it come with a bundle or or what it did, but I don't even know if it's rare or anything like that, but I'm a fan of Sonic games, so if nothing else, I'll go in the collection as a Sonic game that I don't have. The Mega Drive games that I picked up, as I mentioned in the car, we had Championship Bowling. Um, it's a Genesis game, but it does have Sega approved imports, so I'm assuming that it uh, must have been imported by Aussie Soft. If Yeah, you know, there's the Aussie Soft registration card. So it must be one of those games that's fully compatible with 50, 60 hertz. Uh, it doesn't matter what region you want to play it in. Which is good when you've got a modded console, I can actually pick which uh, frequency I want to play it on, which is good. Um, the manual is, I, I would say this is nearly brand new. I can't even see a mark on the manual itself. It's, it's perfect condition. Even the cartridge doesn't have a fingerprint or anything on it. So um, it'd be close to, if not brand new, I don't know. There's not, not a scratch on it. Anyway. The other one we picked up, Shadow of the Beast. Don't have this in my collection, so it'll be going in the collection. Once again, it's complete, um, and it's, once again, in really, really good condition. Um, comes with the paper manual. I'm not sure whether this had, some, some Sega Mega Drive games and Genesis games had like a fully colored printed manual. But I noticed a lot of games in Australia have just had this sort of flimsy paper fold-out type manual. I don't know if this one's fold-out or whether it's stapled, no, it's fold-out. So, um, yeah, so it's fully fully boxed, manual, excellent condition. So this I don't have this in the Mega Drive collection, so it'll be it'll be going straight in the collection with the bowling. And this one too, uh, Double Dragon 3. Um, for the Mega Drive, not for the Genesis, which is always good. Um, I like having Mega Drive games over Genesis versions of them, just because I'm in Australia. Once again, this is, and I, I'll capture some photos of these, this is like brand new condition. Um, the manual, I would even say, hasn't even been taken out of the out of the box. There's no creases, really shiny. Mm, even smells brand new. So, well, really good condition. So, all three of those Mega Drive games I don't have already, so they'll be going straight in the collection, and they'll free. Next up is the V3 Fighting Stick. Uh, it's not in the best condition, to tell you the truth. Um, one of the buttons R2 is stuck down. The other buttons seem to be okay. Uh, so I don't know if a spring's gone in that or whether it's just something stuck in there. Some silicon spray or something might free that button up. Uh, but I'll take a look at that. I think you can get replacement buttons for these. Um, you can use the high quality sandwich buttons as well. Um, it's a little bit of effort, but I think you can. And I might make up a decal for the front. It's sort of the front square bit is recessed in. Um, so you could probably make up a nice, you know, arcade decal to stick across the front with some holes in it to where the buttons would go. And um, I'll see if I can make use of this. So, although I was in pretty bad condition, I was told it fully worked except for that uh, that button here, which just seems to be stuck down. But I'll, I'll have a look at that later. So I'll go into the the bits at box project box to have a look at. Uh, but once again, it was free. Can't complain. Now onto the the PS2 uh, NTSC exclusives I picked up. So the first one was Shining Force Exa, um, only available in the US at the time. NTSC, complete. Um, I do have a couple of other Shining Force games in the collection. I've got some in, um, uh, particularly on, I've got Shining Force 3 on the Saturn. And I've also got Shining Force 2, I think. Shining Force, one of them on uh, the Mega Drive. So, um, yeah, Shining Force Exa. Then we've got um, Soikoden 3. I've got one and two on the PlayStation 1. Uh, so, I think it's only three that I was missing. I have to go through the collection to check on the PS2 games, but once again, fully complete um, and in really, really good condition. So nice to have in the collection. This one's a bit of a, a doozy. Uh, Wild Arms, Alter Code F. Now this is pretty hard to find at a reasonable price. Uh, and I'm gonna say I picked these up at a very reasonable price. Very, very reasonable price. Pretty much the price of this game alone picked up the whole lot for so um, that gives you an indication of how why I couldn't pass up this bundle once again very very good condition I'll take some photos and I'll, I'll add them into the video as well 
Uh, but yeah, really good. Comes with the bonus disc, fully complete. The gentleman said, look, he, he used to import these from the US when he was playing plays. He used to play a lot of games and um, he had a chip PlayStation 2 and he essentially just used to open them up, get a copy of them, close them back up, put them in his collection. He, he doesn't even think they're being played. He was kind of spewing that he didn't leave them sealed, um, you know, and buy two copies of them. But, you know, hindsight is a great thing, but still, these things will hold their value, that's for sure. Now, the same gentleman who sold me these also sold me the PlayStation 1 RPGs that you're going to see here. Uh, and it was the same scenario. So all these are NTSC, all in fantastic condition, and they're all NTSC exclusive as well, which is another thing. So I don't have to worry about importing these from the US anymore. So first one, Thousand Arms, an Atlas game. Um, I, look, I haven't played Thousand Arms before. I think I do have a, a, a backup over here somewhere to play, but I don't have a copy of my collection. So yeah, it's quite an expensive game as well. Uh, Kingsfield 2 is the other, the other one I picked up. Once again, fully complete, manual, everything. Even has this little guide. It's not a map, it's more of just a guide. I think on what things are and you know, weapons and whatnot. Uh, and you know, I've got Kingsfield 1 on the, or the first one on PAL, PlayStation 1. So it's nice to have the, and I think I've actually got Kingsfield 3 or 4 on the PlayStation 2 as well. So uh, just another one to add in the collection. I've got Wild Arms 2. So I've got the first Wild Arms over in the PlayStation 1 PAL section. So it's nice to have the, the second one here. I believe it was NTSC exclusive as well. Manual, discs, everything included. Really, really nice condition. I'm so, I'm so glad I got it off this guy. He was really looked after his collection. Um, and you know, it's, everything's there. Alundra. I've got Alundra 2 in PAL. I don't think Alundra was released on PlayStation 1 in PAL regions. It was only released in the US. Um, I like the lenticular cover. Uh, this one's actually still got this part of the seal still stuck on the back of it. Uh, yeah, the lenticular cover, so it's like a reflective sort of cover on it. Um, it has the map. It looks like a map. Very basic map. Uh, has the manual, and this is an odd manual actually, and I'll get some close-up photos of it. You can have a look at it. It's, um, it's actually like, I don't know how you, it's um, textured, I suppose is the best way to put it. The, the, the character on the front and the wording actually pops out from the manual and I've, I've never seen a manual like that before, so it's really cool. Um, and in really, really good condition as well. Um, so yeah, Cheer and I've got that. As I said, I've got Alundra 2 over in the, uh, in the PAL section in my PlayStation 1 collection. Next one, the last one that I picked up for the NTSC PlayStation 1 exclusive is uh, Beyond the Beyond. I think this was just a Sony game, it wasn't released by anyone in particular, it was a Sony release. Um, manual, once again, is in there, and it's fully complete. Um, I'll give this a go later on, I might even play this today. Actually, I'll put some gameplay up of all these games. Um, they won't be in the one video, I'll do them in separate videos, but yeah, I'll definitely put some gameplay up, particularly the Mega Drive, um, PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games as well. So next up, we've got the two PVMs as you can see here. Uh, essentially they're the same model number, slightly different. Uh, they're both PVM 14, uh, 14.4s. One's a 14.44 QM and one's a 14.42 QM. They both have the same TVL, which is 600 TVL. They both have RGB, they both have S-Video, and they both have composite and a VTR connection as well. The main difference between the two monitors is the 14.44 does RGB and component, uh, 480i component. 480p uh, and the 1442 does RGB uh, S analog and RGB I which is 15 kilohertz digital. Some people call it RGB TTL or RGB I or CGA so um, but they're the differences between the two models. Now I'm tossing up which one to keep and which one to maybe get rid of because I do have a lot of CRTs already. I'll probably keep the one that does analog and digital RGB. They just seem to be a little bit more sought after, a little bit harder to get. And they're pretty much in the same vein as the Commodore 1084s that I've done a video on previously as part of my C CRT collection. So um, I have real no use for a, a 480i uh, interlaced signal. Uh, I know PlayStation 2 does it, but for PlayStation 2 I generally um, play through you know, an OSSC and, and whatnot on, on higher resolution TV. So 480i for me is not a big deal. I'd rather have the analog and digital 
RGB options uh, in the CRT. Uh, what I'll do as well is I'll do a separate video on these. I'll tear both of them down, or at least one of them. Essentially, they're the same internals except for the, the video board on the back. Um, and the reason why the reason why I've changed clothes, and this is actually shot on a separate day from the pickups that I did, is because I had an issue with the top one. I turned it on, and after a couple of minutes, it actually went into vertical collapse. Now I tested this thoroughly when I picked it up. So, you know, there was I spent probably 24 to 48 hours tearing this thing open, going over it, and I found a dodgy solder joint. Uh, it took a while to find it. There's some help from the guys from CRT Collective to find it, but I found it, repaired it, and now it's back in action. So um, it's it's yeah, it's performing very well. I haven't had any issues since. So, but I'll do a separate video on these, and I'll, I'll get them opened up. Uh, they do have a couple of geometry things they need to be fixed up, so I'll set the geometry on it, show you guys how to do that, uh, as well as where the error was or where the issue was in the the Topsy um, PVM that I found where to look for, as well as a bit of a guide on what to look for when, when I uh, when it went to the vertical collapse, where to look on the schematic, where to look on the CRT. Um, so that's it uh, for the pickup video. I'll do some video um, of gameplay on a lot of these games. Um, might take me a little time to do it because I've got to go through and play them all. So bear with me um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.